SpaceX is about to launch cosmonauts again. In the latest revelation from NASA, SpaceX will initiate the mission to send Crew-7 to the ISS. This will be the third time this year that SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft has taken astronauts to space. In contrast, Russia's Soyuz, once renowned as a workhorse in the launch industry, now cannot independently transport its astronauts to the station. What caused this failure to happen? Will Soyuz continue its missions or stop them altogether? Stay tuned as we dive into these questions and more in this episode of Alpha Tech. Throughout history, resupply missions to the ISS have relied on Russia's Soyuz, as integrated crews became the standard level for the ISS program. Every few months, a crew of two or three space travelers, representing different nationalities, would cram into a Russian Soyuz spacecraft and launch from the Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. However, times have changed, and it's a pity for the Russian space industry. Now, Russian astronauts must frequently use American-made spacecraft to get access to space. The only spacecraft capable of carrying astronauts currently belongs to NASA, namely the Crew Dragon that's manufactured by SpaceX. Currently, NASA and SpaceX are preparing for an upcoming crewed mission, Crew-7, and that's scheduled for August. It holds significance as it'll be the seventh operational astronaut mission that SpaceX does for NASA, and it'll be the company's 11th crewed flight overall. SpaceX has been a crucial partner in space missions, having conducted missions to the ISS and beyond, including the private Inspirational 4 flight to Earth orbit in September 2021, and the Axiom AX-1 and 2 missions to the station in April 2022 and May 2023, respectively. The mission includes four members from NASA, ESA, JAXA, and Roscosmos. Among them, the sole Russian representative, Borisov, will be making his first trip to space and serving as a mission specialist. His responsibility will involve monitoring the spacecraft during the dynamic launch and entry phases of flight. He joined the Roscosmos Cosmonaut Corps as a test cosmonaut candidate and had to wait for five years to have the opportunity to go to the ISS. Crew-7 will conduct new scientific research to prepare for human exploration beyond low Earth orbit and benefit humanity on Earth. Experiments will include the collection of microbial samples from the exterior of the space station, the first study of human response to different spaceflight durations, and an investigation of the physiological aspects of the astronaut's sleep. These are just a few of the more than 200 science experiments and technology demonstrations that will take place during the mission. While aboard the orbiting laboratory, Crew-7 will see the arrival of both the SpaceX Dragon and Roscosmos Progress Cargo spacecraft. Crew-7 is also expected to welcome the agency's Boeing Crew Flight Test astronauts, the Axiom Mission 3 crew, and the first cargo flight of Sierra Space's Dream Chaser during their expedition. Following them is the Soyuz MS-24 spacecraft, scheduled to launch on September 15th. It'll carry Roscosmos cosmonauts Ole Kononenko and Nikolai Chubb and NASA astronaut Laurel O'Hara to the space station. This launch will be the first crewed Soyuz mission since Soyuz MS-22 in September of last year. The previous spacecraft experienced a coolant leak in December, prompting Roscosmos to replace it. An uncrewed Soyuz MS-23 was launched in February, and Soyuz MS-22 was brought back without a crew. This incident disrupted Russian ISS activities, compelling astronauts to suspend spacewalks as officials focused on the leak capsule, which serves as a lifeboat for the crew. The Roscosmos investigation concluded that there was no defect with the Soyuz spacecraft that caused the link, even though a Progress cargo spacecraft experienced a similar leak in February. There's no basis to ensure the safety of the next Soyuz journey, even though Joel Montalbo, NASA's ISS program manager, stated that he and Ken Bowersox, NASA's associate admin for space operations, met with Roscosmos officials in Moscow a week and a half earlier. He mentioned that there was no evidence of changes in procedures, tooling, or personnel that could have caused the Soyuz coolant to link. Today, the conclusion of Roscosmos is that some kind of external force, like a micrometeoroid or orbital debris impact, caused the link. The NASA team has also looked at it, independent of the Russian team, and we also can't find anything based on the information we've been given by our Russian colleagues of anything other than some type of external force or debris or something else like that. This further adds to the unpredictability of Soyuz, as the space environment is something that nobody can foresee, and dangers may arise at any time. If Roscosmos doesn't come up with a reasonable solution to address this leakage issue, the risks will continue to be present for their first flight of the year. Not only facing technical issues, the recent slowdown of the Soyuz program also has to deal with a scarcity of launch sites. 
For nearly seven decades, Baikonur has been synonymous with the Soviet and Russia space programs. The sprawling complex on the barren steppe of southern Kazakhstan has hurled hundreds of rockets and ballistic missiles into space, playing a part in some of history's greatest spaceflight achievements. The complex survived the Soviet collapse, endured the economic chaos of post-Soviet Russia, and then helped position the Russian space agency, now known as Roscosmos, as a leader in continued space exploration. The sun, however, has finally set on Baikonur, for Russia anyway. At issue is an arcane contract dispute between Roscosmos, which pays Kazakhstan around $115 million annually to lease the complex, and a Kazakh company that's partnering with Roscosmos to build a new multi-billion dollar launch facility called Zenit-M. Kazakh authorities have seized the assets of Roscosmos' main operator at Baikonur, citing unpaid debts and are demanding $26 million. Bruce McClintock, former defense attaché at the U.S. Embassy in Moscow and a senior space policy researcher at Rand Corporation, a U.S.-based think tank, said, it's the latest symptom of Russia's continual decline as far as their status as a space power. However, it's not that Russia hasn't considered this scenario. As a major power, they still want to have their own launch site. That's why, in recent years, they shifted towards constructing a new launch site for most of their rockets in far eastern Russia at Vostochny. But Vostochny isn't without its challenges. Construction at Vistochny began in 2011. The project slid into a swamp of cost overruns and endemic corruption, with the costs now estimated at $7.6 billion in climbing. The first launch, a satellite, was delayed by one year until 2016. Completion, set for 2018, has been pushed back repeatedly. Of the 10 successful launches conducted to date, none have been manned. Meanwhile, dozens of people have been investigated for embezzlement and theft. Workers have gone on strike at least once due to unpaid wages. In 2021, Russia's top auditor revealed that inspectors uncovered $400 million in financial irregularities at this agency in 2020. For observers of the space program, many of the woes Roscosmos is dealing with are self-inflicted. Last year, just days before Roscosmos was set to launch the latest batch and scores of satellites for low-Earth internet provider OneWeb, Rogozhin made last-minute demands of OneWeb, including that the British government divest its stake. OneWeb refused, and Roscosmos seized the satellites, which it still hasn't returned. On the other hand, Dmitry Rogozhin, the former head of the Roscosmos agency, made alarming comments, such as suggesting that the man-made hole found in a Russian capsule was deliberately made by an American astronaut. This and other incidents, including allowing cosmonauts to pose with flags of separatist forces in Ukraine, drew criticism from NASA and other international partners. Days after that incident, he was pushed out of his job, replaced with a more technocratic former deputy prime minister. As a consequence of these actions and the invasion of Ukraine, Russia's lost its international market and faced funding challenges. The Russian space program experienced slipping quality controls and difficulties with an aging workforce. Additionally, they faced difficulties in obtaining computer chips, which further impacted their capabilities and reputation. The controversy and behavior exhibited by the Russian government have eroded trust in the Russian space program. Many countries have sought alternative providers, and Russia's effectively closed the door on itself as a reliable international launch source. The actions of Roscosmos and its former director have damaged the perception of Russia as a credible player in the global space industry. March. Joking about Starliner is a joke that's no longer funny, because its delays and losses are now just too much. Just when you thought the story of Boeing's Starliner program couldn't get any worse, this happened. The first manned test flight of the CST-100 spacecraft is once again delayed until no earlier than March 2024. To be honest, this was a pretty embarrassing failure for both Boeing and NASA during the three years of repairing and improving this spacecraft. So why keep Boeing, NASA? Is it time to cancel the Boeing Starliner? Boeing debuted the Starliner in 2019 with an unmanned test of the vehicle. Subsequently, they faced over 80 corrective actions they needed to undertake following a series of incidents that occurred with the vehicle, leading to significant delays. Finally, it couldn't launch until 2022. Although Boeing still managed to get the Starliner off the ground, but regrettably, more issues arose with the spacecraft's components. Besides, NASA also attempted to rectify the situation and planned for a launch in the summer of this year. However, those efforts seem to bear little fruit and, unsurprisingly to us, the Starliner has encountered yet another period of delay. The latest announcement from Boeing on August 7th reveals a postponement of the crewed test flight of the Starliner spacecraft, extending until at least March 2024. 
This delay is due to ongoing efforts to inspect and replace the capsule's parachute system, as well as address issues with the flammable adhesive used in the protective electrical tape. Undoubtedly, this seems to be a vehicle that faces an endless stream of challenges and complications. Despite that, Mark Nappi, Boeing's Starliner program manager, said the team's made a tremendous amount of progress since the June update. The chutes will drive the readiness for potential launch dates. 85% of the tape has been remediated in the upper dome of the craft already, he added. But as NASA and Boeing make headway on these problems, they're proving to be very time-intensive. And right now, based on the current plans, we're anticipating that we're going to be ready with the spacecraft in early March. That doesn't mean that we have a launch date in early March. That means we're ready with the spacecraft then. It's like a milestone that's still uncertain, and considering Boeing's track record, can they really even meet that deadline? Even when the spacecraft's repairs are finished, there's still lots to be done for Starliner. The timing of the crewed flight test CFT mission for Boeing's Starliner spacecraft will be determined after evaluating various factors. These include assessing the schedule of the space station's crew and cargo missions, availability of the Atlas V rocket, which is used to launch the Starliner from United Launch Alliance, and other relevant considerations. What I know everybody'd like is a launch date, said Steve Stitch, manager of NASA's commercial crew program. The vehicle will be ready in the March time frame. March is typically a month when the Russians will swap out their Soyuz spacecraft and crews. We gotta look at that and other cargo flights. Mark and his team have to go to work with ULA, and that's when we're able to pin down a specific launch date. It appears that both NASA and Boeing officials are still determined to move forward with Starliner. On one hand, NASA's invested a significant amount of money into this project, and they cannot easily relinquish billions of dollars until it proves successful. On the other hand, regulations mandate the need for at least two commercial sources to sustain the ISS and its crew, and without the Starliner, they can't fulfill that requirement. If the CFT mission can fly by March or April and no other major issues crop up, Boeing could be certified to begin operational space station crew rotation missions by the end of 2024. Once certified, NASA plans to launch one Crew Dragon and one Starliner to the space station each year through the 2030 end of the ISS program. Our plan all along has been to have two different, unique, and diverse space transportation systems, Stitch said. We're working hard to get that in place. Once we do that, get Boeing through the crew flight test and then the certification work, the plan would be to fly one Boeing flight and then one SpaceX flight for our crew rotations per year. Despite the late start and high cost of the delays, Nappy said Boeing remains committed to the Starliner. There's really no reason to change our plans, he said. We bought hardware for the six flights plus the CFT. It still fits well in the window that we have. There are additional flights that are available outside of those six with other customers, but we're still committed. Meanwhile, the costs continue to rise. Boeing's incurred nearly $1.5 billion in losses due to the delays in Starliner's development as of third quarter of this year. One thing's certain, that figure is going to continue to escalate until the capsule's first commercial flight, and neither NASA nor the government will have to bear any cost overruns, as is customary in the realm of spaceflight projects, according to the concept of commercial crew. The idea was that contractors would have the incentive to keep costs low. Therefore, the additional funds needed for the spacecraft's next operations will be provided by Boeing. With this situation persisting, can we hope that Boeing can render the Starliner safe? The extended time frame for him to make the amendments is either an opportunity for a transformation or a peril that might engulf them further into the quagmire of technical issues and debt. The Starliner's got a rocky history, surprising to many because of Boeing's long history as a leader in human spaceflight. The company built the first stage of the legendary Saturn V moon rocket and its successor, the more powerful Space Launch System rocket, and serves as the International Space Station's prime contractor. In 2014, NASA awarded Boeing and SpaceX contracts valued at a combined $6.8 billion to build commercial cruise ships that could carry NASA and partner agency astronauts to and from the space station in the wake of the space shuttle's retirement. The contracts covered up to six flights per company, plus one crewed and one uncrewed test flight. Under an initial $2.6 billion contract, SpaceX designed a crewed version of its Dragon cargo ship that is carried into orbit by the company's Falcon 9 rocket. Boeing's capsule, the Starliner, was built under a $4.2 billion contract, relying on the Atlas V for the trip to space. After a successful unpiloted test flight, SpaceX launched a two-man crew to the space station in May 2020 for the first piloted test flight. The company's now launched 10 piloted Crew Dragon missions, seven for NASA, and three privately funded flights, boosting 38 astronauts, cosmonauts, and civilians into orbit. Meanwhile, Starliner has completed only one uncrewed orbital test flight, which was successfully launched last May. 
An analysis of earlier Starliner testing showed the soft links that connected the parachute riser lines to a harness on the spacecraft weren't as strong as required. The design specification was a safety factor of two, meaning they'd operate safely even if suggested to twice the force that'd never be seen in flight. As it happens, the testing was flawed, and softlinks did not have the required safety factor. Boeing's now opted to replace the softlinks with an improved version and to go ahead and install an upgraded parachute system that was meant to be added after the CFT mission. The parachute changes will be a drop test in November to make sure the system performs as expected. And if all goes well, the flight parachutes will be delivered to Boeing in December. As for that protective tape, Nappy said its purpose was to prevent abrasion damage to the electrical cables snaking through the spacecraft. It's secured using an adhesive that poses a potential fire risk in some conditions. In conclusion, the future of Starliner remains uncertain. Will it be forced to cancel? Let us know what you think in the comments. And that's all for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.